Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make an automatic door that opens and closes with a tween animation. So the way this works, whenever the player gets close to the door, it's going to automatically open and then close. When they try to go out the other side, the same thing happens. It's going to automatically open and then close. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is insert a model into the workspace, and that's where we're gonna be putting all the parts of this door. So you can go and click on the plus sign, and then we're going to be inserting a model. You can go and name this model whatever you want to. The first thing we're gonna do for this model is insert a part. This first part here that we inserted inside the model is going to be the left side of the door. So go ahead and resize that to whatever shape you want to. You can also choose a new material, a new color for it. And after you customize it, we're going to be changing the name of this part. So right click and then press rename. And we're going to rename this to main. And then we're going to put L for left. After we do that, we're going to make a copy of it. So to do that, just click on the part inside the model. And then you can right click and press duplicate. We're going to move that part over to the right hand side. And then we're going to rename it. So we're going to press rename. And then we're going to change the L at the end to a capital R. To make things a little bit easier for the scripting, we're going to make a copy of each side here. And what we're going to do with that part is we're going to use that as the stopping point for the door. So let's go ahead and start with the left-hand side. We're going to duplicate this part. And we're going to move it over. And what I'm going to do for now while we're testing is put the transparency to 0.5 so it's semi-transparent. And then once we actually finish it up, we'll make this invisible by changing it to 1. Okay, so what we're going to do for this part is we're going to rename it. And this is going to be target, and then L. We're going to do the same thing for the right side. So we're going to locate main R. We're going to make a copy of it. We're going to drag it over to where we want the door to stop when it moves. We're going to change transparency to 0.5 like we did for the other one. And then we're going to rename this to target R. So what I'm doing with those extra parts, let's go ahead and take a look at the left side of the door. What I'm going to do in the script is have the tween move the door from its current position to the target position, so right here. And then after that, it's going to go back to its normal position. So the reason it makes it a little bit easier is I can just move the target position. So let's say I don't want it to fully open. Maybe I just want a partial open. Then I can just move that part there without having to change the script. So wherever this part is set is where the door is going to open to. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is insert another part into this model. Let's go ahead and drag this part in front of the door. I'm going to scale it so it's the whole size of the door. So this part right here is going to be the trigger. So whenever the player stops on this part, that's what's going to activate the door to open. So however big you make the door in this direction is going to be like the activation distance. So if you want it pretty close to the door, then keep that part really small. If you want the door to open farther away, then make the part a little bit larger. Just like I did for the other parts over here, while we're testing, I'm going to change this to 0.5 so we can still see it. And then once we finish up, we'll make that part invisible. The other thing I want to do for this part right here is turn can collide off so they don't step on top of it. So if we select that part, we're just going to uncheck can collide. And I'm going to rename this part to trigger underscore in. I'm going to make a copy of that part and move it to the back side. And I'm going to rename that one to trigger out. Okay, and that's the basic parts of this door. Later on, if you want to, you can add a frame and a wall behind it. For now, though, let's just go ahead and anchor all these parts, and then we'll start with the scripting. Before we do add that script, though, we're going to add one more thing. So we're going to click on the plus sign, and we're going to add an int value. We're going to rename that int value to speed. And then for now, we're going to set the value equal to 3. Okay, so we have all the parts we need, so let's go ahead and start with the script. So we're going to click on the plus sign and then add a script. We're going to start this script with a variable for the model. So we'll say local model, and that's going to be equal to script.parent. Next, we're going to make two variables, one for the trigger in and one for the trigger out. So we'll say local trigger underscore in, and that's going to be equal to model.triggerIn. 
we'll do the same thing, local, and then trigger out. That's going to be equal to model dot trigger out. And then two more variables for the left and right side of the door. So local left is going to be equal to model dot main L. And then local right is equal to model dot main R. We're going to make a variable so that we can keep track of whether the door is activated or not. So we'll say local activated. And we're going to start that equal to false. Next, we're going to make a variable for the tween service. So we'll say local tween service. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put quotation marks and then tween service. After that, we're going to define some properties of the tween. So we'll say local tween info. And that's going to be equal to tween info dot new. We're going to put parentheses and then drop it down a little bit. The first part of the tween info is the speed. So this is how long it takes the animation to complete. And we're going to base that off of whatever we put inside of speed here. So to get that value, we're going to say model dot speed and then dot value. And then after that, we're going to put a comma. And then I'm just going to put a comment here. And this is going to be our time for completion. After that will be the easing style. So we'll say enum dot easing style. And there's a few different easing styles that you can take a look at. The one I'm going to choose for now is Quart. So that is our easing style. Next is going to be the easing direction. So enum dot easing direction. And I'm going to choose out for this one. OK, next will be the repeat count. So we don't want this to repeat, so we're going to put 0. The next value is whether it's going to reverse or not. And we do want it to reverse, so we're going to put true. And for the last part will be the delay time. So we don't want any delay time, so we're going to put 0. And since that's the last option, we don't need a comma for the last one. OK, so now we have the properties of our tween defined. So we're going to write a function now that will open and close that door with that tween. So let's go and start by saying local function. The name of this function can just be open. Since we're using touch events, we're going to get the other part automatically. So this is going to be the other part that touches our two triggers. What we're going to do first inside this function is make sure that a player is touching that part. So we're going to say local player. And we're going to say that's equal to game dot players. And then we're going to say colon find first child. We're going to take the other part and their parent. So that should be the player's model. And then we're going to take the name for that and use that to search for the player. If we're able to find the player and the door is not activated, then what we're going to do is we're first going to set activated equal to true. So that would mean our door is opening. And then we're going to create a tween for each side of the door. So let's start by saying local tween. And then we'll do capital L for the left side. It's going to be equal to tween service, colon, create. Inside here, we're going to start with the object that we want to tween. So that's going to be the left part. We're going to use the tween info as the properties. And make sure you use the one with the lowercase t, because that corresponds to the variable name up here. OK, the last part of this is going to be the property of the part that we're going to be tweening. We're going to put that in curly brackets. And the property that we're going to be changing is the position. And we want to set that equal to the target position. So that's going to be located inside the model. We want the left side to go to the target L. And then from the target L, we want to go to that position. OK, so that covers the left side. So let's just go ahead and copy this. So we'll say this is tween R. We're going to tween the right side. And then for the position part, we're just going to change this to target R. OK, next we're going to play our two tweens. So let's go and start by saying tween L, colon, and play. And then tween R, colon, and play. And then after that, we want to say activated is equal to false, so the door can be opened again. Before we do that, we want to wait a certain period of time to allow the tween to complete. And we can do that by saying tween R. And it doesn't matter which one you use. 
And then we're going to say dot completed. And then we're going to say colon wait. So this will wait until that tween is completed before setting activated back to false. Okay, so finally we just need to set up our touch events. So we need to connect the trigger in and the trigger out to this function. So we're going to do that by saying trigger underscore in dot touched colon connect. And then we're going to connect this to our open function. And we're going to do the same thing for the other one. Okay, and there we go. So we have both of those touch events connected to the same function. So they can either touch the in or the out. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out and see how everything looks. And I can see here in the output, I made a mistake. So let's fix that real quick. Okay, I just forgot the T on that one. So let's stop and rejoin. Okay, so everything looks good so far. Let's go ahead and touch this part right here and see if the door opens. Okay, that looks good. And I can't retouch the part. It doesn't do anything. So once the door is closed completely, that's when I can reactivate it. So right now it seems like a speed of three is a little bit too slow. So let's go ahead and modify that. So here in the speed option, I can choose a lower number. Let's try one and see how that looks. Okay, so that opens quite a bit faster and closes quite a bit faster. You can see though, I can't get all the way off the second trigger before it opens again. So that may be an indication to you that we might need to make those triggers a little bit smaller. So let me go ahead and shorten that up a little bit. Okay, so that should be a little bit better. And now that they're shortened up a little bit, you can see the player gets off that second part before it closes. Like I mentioned before, there's a couple different easing styles. Let's take a look at one other one, and then I'll leave it up to you as far as which one you choose. So one other easing style is called bounce. So if we use that as the easing style, let's see what that looks like. So in this case, we're not going to get a smooth open and close. It's going to be a little bit bouncy. So let's see what it looks like. So you can see when the doors open, they bounce a little bit and do the same thing as they close. You may also want a sound for when your door opens. So we can do that by opening up the toolbox. Let's look in the audio section. And let's go and start by searching for door to see what that gives us. We can help our search a little bit by using the filter. So let's go from zero minutes to five seconds. So we're gonna do zero, zero, and then five for the seconds. So this is gonna limit our searches to only five second clips. And then you can take a look at some of these to see which one you like. Okay, and once you find a sound you like, and I'm gonna use the spaceship door, go ahead and start by just clicking on your model and then click on the sound. It should insert it inside the model, but for whatever reason, if you find it outside the model, then just drag it inside. Let's go ahead and rename the sound to just door. And then for the script, what we're going to do is right here below activated, we're going to say model. We're going to use square brackets, and then we're going to put the name of our sound. So if you don't want to rename this to door, just make sure you update the name right here to whatever you're using. And then outside the square brackets, we're going to put colon and play. Okay, so now when I open the door, I should have that sound effect. Now that we have the model working, we can clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to make both of the triggers invisible by changing the transparency equal to one. And I'm going to do the same thing for the side pieces. So now we just have the door here. And like I mentioned before, you can adjust the two side pieces to adjust how far the door opens. So let's go ahead and take target L. And let's move it halfway inside of the door so it only opens halfway. And we'll do the same for target R. We're going to move it halfway inside the part. And let's take a look at this now. So now when we activate the door, it's only going to open this much rather than the full amount. And just as another example of how these parts move to the targets, I went ahead and moved them behind the door so we can see what that looks like. So now they open like that. So you can really customize the way this door opens and closes by moving those target parts. And once you have the base model working the way you want to, that's when you can add different things like a frame around the door and maybe putting it inside of a wall. So there's a lot you can do to customize this. And if there's anything else you want me to do with these doors, go ahead and let me know in the comments. 
For now, though, this is going to be the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.